So to that, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. That's right. That's it's right. what people say about you. And y'all have done such an amazing job of humanizing this brand because you are, you brought your family into it. And you get to tell that story to your customers. And that story just keeps on going. So they're like, you humanized your brand. Okay, I can connect with you. Welcome to the Love Your Brand Podcast. If you're looking for real conversations with real people, you're in the right place. Let's go! I just got situated. So speak into the mic. Check, check. One, two, one, two. Sound check, sound check. Talon Alexander Coffee brought to you by. <laughs> Microphone check. One, two, one, two. And you don't quit. And you don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is good. Okay, I had to, I had get to it, turn. get it. This is I, good. I had to turn Belle up a little bit. Now she's All right, like the waves. Okay. I'll try and keep my sound level. See what? I'm not making any promises. <laughs> <laughs> what Belle doesn't know is that all of this is going to be in the podcast. She thinks we're going to crop this out. Oh, this is in there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. This is the best part. Good. Behind More for me and you. <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan does, does no edits. Have you no. ever had this coffee before? I've never had you it. You haven't? It. Like, it's so good when it hits your lips. When it hits your lips, yes. yeah. <sighs> Hang on, let's take a sip. Oh. All right, so when I hear you in my headphones, uh -huh. have y'all seen the Saturday Night Live skit with the two ladies that are like on the radio and they're talking real soft like this? Sweaty balls. Sweaty balls. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas is coming. PG, baby. <laughs> no, it's, they're, um... They're... <laughs> Talking about the meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready for Christmas. It's the sweaty balls. Oh they're round. She sounds just like her. And they're, they're nice and warm. They're best when they come right out of the oven. Mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> PG Gentles. Maybe, maybe our editor will drop in a picture right now of the two ladies on Saturday Live so we know that, hey, this is legit. This is real. Do we look just like them? You do. It's kind of oh. weird. It's kind of creeping me out. I knew I should have worn I my mean, in sweater a good way. vest. <laughs> a sweater I wore vest. a sweater vest yesterday. <laughs> is it? Um, huh. uh, <laughs> now, is that chewing tobacco or one of the little packets? It's I've candy. seen the packet. It's candy. That is a candy pouch. Oh. Yes. What flavor Co is it? Copenhagen straight. Okay. Is that a bandit? Yes. That is a bandit. Yes. Hmm. So. Huh. Okay. All right. It's a vice. It calms me down. You know, it gets me in the mood. Could take some CBD, <laughs> some oils. <laughs> the podcast mood. <laughs> I've got mm. some Siberian fur. I like Siberian yeah. fur. You like mm -hmm. that? That's good Christmas time. You can put a few drops on your artificial Christmas tree mm -hmm. and it'll smell like a real Christmas tree. Just like it. Just like it. Yeah. Hey, is this and a big uh, coffee mug? This is very big. It, it's it looks large and in charge. <laughs> but compared to yours. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Well, I'm branded. I came I came branded. You did come branded. I think brand is your middle name. It should be. Right. <laughs> no, Belle is actually my middle name. What's your first name? You know my first. You don't know my first name? Alicia. Yeah. Samantha. Mm, mm -mm. Flois. Yes. <laughs> Martha. Really? For real? Do I, do I look like a Martha? Look more like a Mary. Oh. Mm, no, I am all over some Martha <laughs> in the Bible. The biblical times, yeah. for real. Martha? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That. Martha Darden. That was it. Because that was your maiden name. That was it. See? I was an MD before I was an MD. That's amazing. Mm. I'm a doctor. Did you guys know this? I'm a doctor. We have a doctor on the podcast today, everybody. Mm -hmm. We it's have a official. doctor. A doctor with official. her PMP. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> now, this is exciting because you're our first guest. Like, normally it's been me and Jason in here and goofing off. You took some B-roll earlier because that's typically what happens. Yeah. We had yeah. Simon in here. We've had Zan Hello, and Megan. Hello, my name is Simon. Hello, my name is Simon. Simon. And I like, like to, to do, do drawings. drawings. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready for this, like, Jason? Are you ready for this? I'm just soaking it in. I'm is, <laughs> is the audience ready for this? I don't know. They might oh, be. yeah. Because they've been waiting for this. They have been waiting for waiting. this. I've been waiting for this. When Jason first said, hey, man, I'm going to launch a podcast. First person I said we got to have on is Bell. Is Martha? Is Martha? <laughs> no. Martha Bell. <laughs> because 
you and I go pretty far back. Way back. Like um, at least 30 days, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I was going to say like at least a month and a half. <laughs> you know? um, I lose track of time. No, mm-hmm. what? 10 mm-hmm. years? Eight years? Before before your daughter was born, mm. for sure. And she's almost eight. You thought she yeah. was six, but she's almost eight. <laughs> I lost track um, of time. Mm-hmm. I hallucinated on the way here, so I like went through a time warp and lost right? track of time. Well, you came to Rock Hill because we're in the side yard. Mm-hmm. The podcast is currently in the side yard. That's what we mm-hmm. like to say. Mm-hmm. Do you remember where you and I met? Oh. I do. I absolutely do. Where was it? It was at a murder mystery dinner. Slash. Engagement. Yes. Engagement. Yes. So, yeah, it was like, oh, man. All right. So for murder mysteries, we all dress up. You you can't, you don't enter unless you dress up. You have all to. have your part. Have Everybody to. dresses up. I'm trying to remember what you were dressed as. I, I vividly remember the couple amazing. that got engaged because the guy was a carny and like <laughs> nailed it. And his soon bride to be who he proposed to that evening was, oh, she was going clubbing. I'll, I'll say that kindly. That she Ain't was nothing going, but a hoochie mama. Hump oh, back, hump back, hoochie mama. Hoochie mama. Hoochie mama. She did it well. So, yeah, so we met there. That's it right. It was amazing. So it's pretty cool, Jason. Like, you know, the first time I met Belle and her awesome husband, Jonathan, they're dressed up. So I don't know if, like, this is how they normally dress. This is what they normally look like or what? Because it was a murder mystery dinner mm-hmm. in costume. And what I was, I was a tattoo artist. Jason would have dug this. Yes. I got those little, you know, the tattoos that you mm. put a washcloth on for 30 seconds. I cut each one out. I made a full sleeve, you know, on my arm. It took me about three hours because I was wow. that detail oriented. Put them on my neck, put them on my chest, my fingers, everything you can think of. Because like what Jason looks like is like, Internally, I want to look like mm. that. I mm. just can't pull the trigger on the sleeves yet. Would you say that Jason is your spirit animal? Man. If you could spirit have. Spirit man. I like that. Oh. He is not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I'm hearing you, you, you talk. I think you dress up like that. The first time I met Belle, it was at a costume. I was like a, I was like a, a second. cowboy this is awesome. and like yes. an old cowboy with gray in my hair. At our yes. house. At, at your house. Yes. That was the first we time did. I met. Oh my yes. gosh. <laughs> <That was the laughs> first time. Why are we not dressed up today? <laughs> I don't know. We need to go back and redo this. <laughs> or we need another That was a Western party. One. It was. Was that a Western party? Oh my gosh. Yes. That was amazing. Yeah, Rachel had a little a gun. Light. Yeah. Yeah. The Kyle, had gun. A, Kyle had a real gun. Mm. We, we checked out the doors. There's no ammo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. So I don't know what that means, that all of our introductions with Belle were costumes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it really means that I am in the appropriate field. <laughs> Are you in the costume? Do you work for Spirit Halloween? Halloween Spirit? What's the? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's one of my disliked holidays. Ew. Ooh. No. I'll pass on, pass on Halloween. Okay. So no. you're not in the costume field? Mm-mm, no. Not in the costume field. So... I talk about branding with my clients, which is, you know, our connection here, which I love that. Mm. But part of branding with my clients is we talk about their dress. What you dress can be a form of a costume every day, but Stop you want to make sure that you dress authentically and how you show up and mm. how you present yourself. So you have four to seven seconds to make that impression with people. So how wow. are, what's the story that you're telling them? You get to be the narr- narrator of your own story. So what are you telling people? So yeah, that's really good. As we all showed up and met each other in costume, we were all being super fake. <laughs> we had no idea what was going on. <laughs> no. Clue. No, not a clue. But it was well worth it. You know, I have a, I have a question about that. So that's, well, I, I want to get to how you got into that mm-hmm. in a second. Mm-hmm. But like, so I love being casual. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, cut off sweat shorts, you know. Um, tank top kind of a thing. The team kind of laughs because a lot of time I work from home. So my shirt's off a lot because I'm comfortable. Okay. So that's not really my attire. Are you an exhibitionist? I, I don't think so. Um, but when the camera comes on, you know, I'll, I'll dress accordingly. Well, mm-hmm. I say I'll dress accordingly. So my question about that is that is me. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. But if I go out and meet a potential client, if I'm, should I show up that way because that's me or do I need to dress up? And if I dress up, is that still me or am I being inauthentic by dressing up? 
Like, what are your comments on that? That is a great Ooh. question. Because when you started this, I was going to say, but you pull off a suit so well. Well, thank you. So well. Oh. You know how to pull off a suit. So you make that. That's part of you also. You're going to meet with potential clients. So you do want to elevate yourself and you want to put your best foot forward right out of the gate. Because, again, it's that four to seven seconds that they are going to judge you. So... What do you want to say? You get to control the narrative of that. So what do you want to say before you even open your mouth? Now, after you open your mouth, that's up to you. You could be dressed in your cutoff t-shirt and, but they would see you and maybe discount you immediately, but maybe they wouldn't. So interesting. As opposed to if you were in a suit. So everyone bases their judgment in between four to six seconds based on what the other person looks like and what and what they wear yeah what you're saying wow yeah it's crazy crazy. i mean we don't want to live in a world we judge each other you know it's like judging a book by its cover i do it all the time i mean we talk about branding Mm, branding you judge a book by its cover i'm gonna pick something off 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 the shelf because it caught my eye yes it you know i was connected to it i was emotionally connected to it and then i was physically connected to it so we all think about that and how you present yourself to the world you remember yeah. when, um, like a month or two ago, ran into y'all at Whole Foods? Yes. So Belle and I, well, first of all, so her husband, Jonathan, give you a drop. You are, you're the man. We're going to talk about you in a second, probably. Um, but so I go to Whole Foods and I'm like over, I see Jonathan, her husband, at the supplement section. And he doesn't see me. And we have like a little bit of a height difference. And uh, so I go over and I like. I start getting close to him. Like I look like I'm looking at what he's looking at and we're like shoulder to shoulder. And he like takes a little step to the right to get away from me. And, uh, you know, I'm like reaching and kind of leaning over. (laughs) Uncomfortably (laughs) close. So uncomfortably close. He finally like looks over and just starts laughing. He was like, I thought it was you. Like you can see me in the peripheral. I don't know if you really thought it was Just didn't want to make eye contact. (laughs) Right. Right. But I was like, I was up on him, you know, close. And then I saw Bell down further. And uh, so we chat for a minute, but then Belle and I both, you know, just having a passion for mm-hmm. branding, you know, we're both looking on the end aisle, the end cap, mm-hmm. you know, there and like, oh, look at this brand. Look at it. Why are they doing this? Like this and that, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just so interesting with brands. I mean, how it is about just that immediate first impression of mm-hmm. what jumps out at you. You know, I heard a quote one time that said, it's better to be different than to be better. Mm. And so if you had like, you know, 10, 20, 50 brands, they all sell the same product there. Mm-hmm. Which one is different? That's going to catch your eye first. Yeah. How you do know? you define different though? Ooh, um, I think I'm different just in general. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of yes. weird. So, you know. <laughs> your own brand. I, I'm my own brand. <laughs> I'd say the first decade, you know, I had the wardrobe of suits and and shirts, tailored, ties. Are you yes, serious? Actually, yes. Believe it or not. Editor, um, drop a picture of Jason in a suit right now. Yeah. Good luck. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the same song and dance, we would go to pitches. Yep. They would come out. Everybody looked the same. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there would be other agencies and they would all have the, the same kind of vibe, right? Um, none of them rarely brought, like, the even the creative would be kind of dressed up, you know, you know, to me personally, I think it depends on, you've got to feel the situation out. Like you want it because it's some form of respect, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's true. Yeah. You know, for yourself and the client. Exactly. Exactly. Like we, we went to a pitch the other other day and I dressed up more than usual. Well, what's, what's funny to interject so we took Helen with us, you know, just a sales consultant, you know, just amazing woman, very professional. Okay. You know, she plays a part. She's great with her attire. And Jason and I, we, we dressed up. So mm-hmm. we said, and she said, oh, y'all did. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, he threw her off. Yeah. He she, threw, um, did you throw off her game she, for the pitch, though? She didn't think that we dressed up. And Jason and I are like, we, we look how dressed up we are. <laughs> I was dressed up. I had a button up white shirt yeah um slim kind of athletic pants what'd you have around your waist sneakers clean right yeah. my okay. nice sneakers okay. yeah and i had my fanny pack on underneath yeah. my white shirt that's amazing so we go in we're, and then on the way i said helen hat or no hat she said oh, right. do you really have to ask me that 
<laughs> I said, you're right, hat. <laughs> and she just laughed. She said, oh, you're just, you're, you're hilarious. So what I did is I wore my hat backwards. And then in between the meeting, I took it off, put my hair in a ponytail. So I saw they, that. So they got both. I saw that. They got oh. little. They got best of both worlds. So yeah, they got all the flavors. They got versatility. Yeah. Huh. I think I caught them off guard initially when I brought up my white button-up shirt and I had the fanny pack on. <laughs> Did that, you have anything in like oh another no. layer? Oh no. Okay. No. So yeah, you showed no, them you, the six pack. No, you had like a a tank. I know. Did I have a did I have a tank top? Or a PC time? Like I can't say the Did wife beater shirt. Mm, you know, because mm, a lot of people don't like that. Mm, um, yeah. And mm-hmm. so it was a boy what? tank. Yeah, boy tank. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe I did. you did because my tattoo. Because I got scared as I, as I saw. <laughs> it was like you, you ever had those things that happen, and to where it's happening in real time, but to you it's in slow motion. Yeah, like that's as what I just saw Jason to, to go hands. grab his shirt, like right now. It was like you know, and I'm like, <laughs> you do have big hands, right? It's the coffee mug. See, if I would have had your did coffee you see, mug, was it just me? I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, but, but I see Jason now. No, not uh, the furry trail. See, I told you ahead of time. This, is, this could happen. We don't know where the podcast goes. So that's why I wore it. You're right. Oh, but you slow mo Hold on. I saw slow-mo you going to, for your shirt, you know, and pulling it up. And I was like, no. <laughs> and I stood up. And then Everybody was sitting down. It was like right in the beginning of the meeting. I was like, okay, this is going to be an icebreaker. Yeah. Boom. And it was. And it was. I butted in on you. I don't know if you're able to regain where you're going with all that. So the shirt was kind of see-through, so I did wear, <laughs> I was considerate, because I've had is a lot of tattoos. Is see-through a fad for men today? Uh, okay, so sheer is actually a trend oh now into, but I'm not so sure to white shirt in a business setting. Well, it was, do they call it athleisure now? Is that it? It's my wife got it Who's for they? me. It's, I always want to know who is they. That's a good question. Who mm. is they? Um, do they call it? But it's they very, make a lot of things up. It's very comfortable. I believe in being comfortable. Yes. You know, like anytime my wife sees me comfortable. Um, <laughs> What's happening with the voice? <laughs> I'm like, is that how she says it? Because I'm like. Okay, it's something on Instagram I always see. It's like. You know, anytime you're comfortable, your wife comes in and is like, hey, hey, honey, will you please do this? That sounds good. Anytime more like you're wife. comfortable. <laughs> um, so like she that. got me the outfit. She, your she drip, knows drip, drip. I, my drip, drip. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. did we even get a photo? How? If there's no photo, there, if there's no happen. visual evidence, it, it, if you didn't post it on Instagram, it didn't mm-hmm, happen. Mm-hmm, it did not exist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we did not even get a photo. You Aww. Were going on. You're going to have to recreate it. He was dressed up. He had sneakers. You had some nice kind of high tops on or something or low cuts or. My white Nikes? Yeah. Oh. Oh, so, all right. Okay. So let, let's get back. Um, okay, where were we at? No clue. <laughs> but I think this will tie it into Bell. Bell brought up a point a second ago that jumped out at me. She talked about, was it her or you? That said you have to respect, or she said you respect yourself too, mm-hmm. you know, with that. And mm-hmm. so, for example, I got asked to speak in Vegas back in January, and it was an audience, a few hundred, you know, 300 maybe. And small, small was, gathering. Yeah, you know, um, I, uh, yeah, I, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Um, not your fault. Um, squirrel. But um, when I was there, I was like, all right, what am I going to wear here? And I think we even chatted about it mm-hmm. actually back then. And mm-hmm. I ended up going with a suit, um, but no tie. And so because it was like, all right, the environment that I'm going to be around are professionals. Most of these people are going to be dressing up. And so I want to fit in with them. However, what I was saying earlier, like, how, how can you be different? Um, so instead mm-hmm. of, so I didn't wear a tie. So it was like a casual suit. Um, but instead of dress shoes, I put white sneakers. And so with no socks. And so I'm up there with this blue, good looking suit and white sneakers. And I remember people throughout the event, they were like, you know, I may not remember what you said, but I remember you as the guy with the white shoes kind of a thing. Just ankles and so poking out. And so with the ankles poking out. Mm-hmm. And so it was, you but that's important. Ankles. You, you can know, pull that I off. mean, great looking mm-hmm. ankles, you know, 45 mm-hmm. year old ankles right there. Um, <laughs> but, you know, with that beautiful, glorious um, <laughs> ankles, I can't wait to see where this goes. 
Mm. Better than cankles. Um, it's so better. I'm so glad. I don't, you don't have cankles. You do not Camera, have cankles. can you see? Those are no cankles there. Um, I swear to cat. Anybody would like goes. to sponsor these ankles? <laughs> this space is for sale. Dr. Scholes? Is that something with ankles? I don't know. <laughs> um, is there any point in finishing? I don't know where I was going. Oh, but with that, you know, it's like Maya Angelou. She says, people won't always remember what you say, but they'll remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I may not mm -hmm. have given any value in my talk, but people remembered who I was, that speaking session where he was somebody. And so it goes back to Belle with what she's saying, like, you know, respect, you know, the audience you have, respect yourself with that. And then as like my take on how I could be different, because Belle said, how are you different? And just a little subtle thing. And I think with our brands, with anything, you don't have to be so big over the top different, mm -hmm. but just something to wear because branding is what all about emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and how can you be different in that? And so like, I mean, with you, what is, describe your brand to us because I don't, I, I could share like my thoughts. Like when I see what you post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, what is, what do you want your brand portrayed as? Oh, I love that. Okay. So when you were talking, I was actually thinking of, so what, how we dress and how we represent ourselves is a reflection of our inner selves mm -hmm. at the end of the day, because I am faithful, I'm faith filled. I want to be a projection of Christ instead of a reflection of myself. So how you see me dress is generally how I feel. If you see someone dressed in, you know, sweatpants all day, they might not feel great about themselves. You all dress in athleisure, athletic wear. That is your brand, but you're also elevated just a little bit. And that's what I tell my clients. I want them to be like, meet your client where they are. It's having respect for them, but elevate yourself just a little bit. That elevation can be that thing that makes you stand out, like your Nikes. It could be the hot magenta. You have just like a little piece of hot magenta on whatever you wear. Yeah. So that's a reflection of you. So people are going to see that. Um, and then they're going to be like, okay, well, he's got a little bit of sass in him with that hot pink. I love it. Yes. The hot magenta. Or he probably has daughters. What does that mean? And you and your bracelets, like Navea makes these super cool bracelets yeah. and you wear them. They're like, he's a dad. I love that. And that's he's true. got his own brand, his own style. Um, so for me, I, I'm super joyful. Like my default is joy. So I don't really overly dress with Did you know that's my first name? Is it? Yeah, Joy. Oh, really? Uh -huh. How do you spell that? I bet it's spelled really creatively. <laughs> is it a G E O U Y E. <laughs> oh. Joy. <laughs> my name's not Joy. <laughs> joy Alexander. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Comfortable. <laughs> I'll never be able to say that word ever again without going comfortable. You'll see it now on your own Instagram feed. Trust me. Well, of course, because our phones are listening. Oh, so it's going to pop up. Yeah. So yeah, your accessories, you know, it's like I feel with my mm -hmm. rings, you know, I feel like when I have my rings on, I'm like, that's, that's me. You know, I've been wearing a thumb ring for like eight years. So I just kind of feel like this an accessory that mm -hmm. kind of can help whatever I'm wearing. Right. And yeah, becomes yeah. part of you. Becomes yeah. part of you. you know, well, like your I'm hair really. is too. That's a, that's a mark of you. It's your true. hair is like, people are like, Oh yeah, Jason. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hair, the hair. I love it. Got it. Hair. And the glasses. the glasses. Well, it's like Larry King, you know I mean? He's known his glasses and his suspenders. Mm. Like every time he's in that, typically Jason mm -hmm. is in tank top. Mm -hmm. You know, but we dressed up really, I love really that you guys well dressed for me today. Thank I mean, you. Look at <laughs> we, we had to elevate because he said Belle's coming. I was like, oof. Right. Like, hey, okay. How like, in the world do we dress for that? She's in the costume we? industry. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween costumes. Yes, that's exactly what I do. I'm so glad you guys know me. You know, we, we, we do a lot of vetting to make sure that we understand our guests before they come on. You're I'm going to have a talk with your research team. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, I think the reason I'm always in a tank top is because I'm busting my hump trying to get it's everything hot, prepared. Right. And I wear myself out mm -hmm. and I'm like, man, it's hot. And I just, I never change. Right. That's, yeah. what, that's what it is. And the one day I chose to wear a tank top over here because I knew I was going to be sweating before I put on my, my professional gear here. Okay. Then Belle comes in and it's filming us. You know, us looking like bums. <laughs> hey, <laughs> awesome. I still have to represent y'all's brand, my brand. There so I needed go. some B-roll. We're going to get go. the authentic this is this is style true. of how this was. So it's going to be posted later today. You guys 
be on the lookout for that. Be I on the love lookout it. For that. So, so go back, bail to what you were describing. So what do you do for your clients? You, you elevate their, their personal brand mm -hmm. through fashion, through yes. what they wear. Yes. So, time. so I've been in marketing for 21 years, <laughs> you know, basically I'm a baby. Yeah, you, you, I'm a you baby. started when you were seven. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we said I'm I'm eight years old now. Oh, so yeah, that's right, that's I'm eight right. years old now. <laughs> yes, awesome. <laughs> so I basically just started. Um, so yeah, just through marketing, I you know I've worked for corporations and ad agencies, and I'd always done account management and project management, and loved it. And decided to leave the corporate world. I'm a corporate world dropout. Yes. Ooh. Praise Jesus. Recovering Amen. corporate. <sighs> I hear you. Corporate okay. world dropout and. Um, I quit my job right before COVID. Who knew it was going to happen? Who knew it was going to come? Um, but I was just so blessed and had great jobs, networked with people and picked up jobs with project management. And more and more people were saying, hey, I've got this presentation that I'm going to. Can you help me get dressed for it? Or can you help me with the branding of my presentation? So was that before you had already launched and, and specialized in this? Yeah. People just came to you just because they knew your fashion sense and stuff mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. Okay. So, which I had never really thought about doing anything in fashion before. It never really dawned on me. So I was just like, well, I'm getting more questions about this. I think I need to lean into it. You know, that let's lean in. So I was like, all right, let me, let me see where I can really go with this. So then I started doing more image consulting and I was mm. in people's closets and that just feels really icky to me. I'm like, I yeah. don't want to be in your closet. Like here are the things you need to do. There's three things you need to do to clean out your closet. Take this, be an adult and go. If you have maybes then I'll come over and we'll look at the maybes or we can do a zoom call. Um, and then, so I got into a good place with that and then it just still felt hollow. It kind of felt empty with just saying, okay, this is how you look and this is how you're going to dress. And I saw the confidence that people had mm. once they started dressing mm. for them and how they could really show up and present themselves. I'm like, this is still you, whether you're wearing a t-shirt and jeans and owning your company, but you're elevated just a little bit more and you own this. So I saw that confidence and loved it. And I was like, how can I really pair this together with marketing and branding? Mm. And everybody's their own personal brand. Right. I mean, I've told my nieces for years, I'm like, whatever you put on social media, that is your digital resume. And that is going to follow you for life. For life. It doesn't for matter life. if you delete that mess That's or right. not. So, and like, I mean, I'm eight years old, so right. I grew up with social media. <laughs> she was I mean, y'all, we didn't have to think media. about that. No, yeah. No. So, I mean, we, we grew up, I mean, we're pretty close to the same age. We grew mm -hmm. up when there was no internet. Yeah. Like we talked to some of our younger team members, talked to Nevea, you know, our kids. And you fast forward a few decades. There's a lot that's happened. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and how, Quickly. I mean, think of the sales perspective back in the day, door to door. You, know, you show up in a suit. Most of the salespeople back then mm -hmm. were that, you yeah. know, but times are so different now. And I think audiences are, are so different as well mm -hmm. to where, you know, my brand, your brand, your brand, you know, the way you dress, it, it may appeal to this group, mm -hmm. may not appeal to this group. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know who you're serving, who you're yes. going after. You know, yep. and again, you have to be authentic. I, I think authenticity is the number one anchor to a brand. Yep. You know, it just hands down. But you you got to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so would you think that based on that, you know, find yourself first and then see where your market is based on that, as opposed to the this is who I want to serve. And I must tailor my, my brand, my personal brand a little bit to serve this. Hmm. Do you understand what I asked? Did I ask that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that you want, you need to know who you want to go after. If it's something that is not, that doesn't resonate with you at all, or like is not even in your realm of expertise, you have to decide if you're going to learn that and really embody that yourself. Cause if you're not, it's just going to feel so off. It's just like going to work for any company or corporation or agency. And if they don't fit with your values and moral compass, you're going to feel off. It's true. So make sure that you know exactly what you're going after. It does help if you're going after something that is like you. You can still have aspirations and hopes and aim for something. Like I, I elevate because like, I know yeah. where I want to go. 
and I'm taking myself there and I'm taking my clients there and we're going together. So, I mean, I don't dress up every day either. I certainly don't like, it's not going to happen, but I love to be, I know where I want to go. All I say, I know where I want to go. So I want to get there, but I'm still authentic to myself as I am on that path. Um, so I'm not completely off my path. I'm just like, let's go just a little step over here. Cause I know I want to, it's going to take me there where I want to hit. Yeah. So yeah, Jason, did you ever have corporate experience? <clears throat> uh, I, I did earlier in my career before I went to design school and even in design school, they made us wear like, like dress code, like yeah. button up, tuck, tucked in belts, nice shoes, you know, and that was only a two year tech kind of degree. That ended up, Interesting. But mm -hmm. they, they made you dress the attire and the, the whole sales pitch, like any college, right? <laughs> is you go and you dress up and, and they will sit, send you on all these interviews and you would come out of school, you know, and, and make a gazillion dollars, right? Of was, course. That's not true. <laughs> that, I mean, everybody in the marketing industry makes a gazillion dollars. Right. Well, you know, that's what that's what they pitch you in, mm -hmm. in school. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've interviewed, you know, kids coming out of college and they've been all dressed up and they're like, hey, this is what I'm going to make. You know, this and this and oh yeah, I'm like mm -hmm. okay. they they lead that conversation. They mm. they they do, and some big corporations will may take that responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I learned very quickly that I was different. Uh, I kind of had my own, own beat, right? I marched on my own beat and my drum, and it was like corporate really wasn't a good fit. And then right. I, I fell into entrepreneurship. And I was like, wow, this is, this is it. I like this, you know? And then it just kind of morphed over time, you know? And, and now, even now, I'm in a new phase to where I'm looking at elevation. I'm looking at elevating. I'm looking at reinventing myself, mm -hmm. you know, 20 years in marketing. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I can design. I know how to design. I know how to market. I know how to brand. I, I, I want to do something different. So hence the passion projects that are starting to, to branch out. Right. Love your brand podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do more, more engagements. If that's just mentoring, if that's uh, speaking engagements, I've said no over the last 10 years to everything mm -hmm. just because I, I wasn't comfortable. Um, <laughs> comfortable. I had no, I really didn't, you know, I was just kind of living life, right? Mm -hmm. Just in, enjoying the balance just that I that I've built. You know, and and just a side note, when you when you were talking about people putting on these clothes and, and they look like they they feel better, they they look better, they they're the best. I think you also see another um, piece of the puzzle is is their health, right? Mm -hmm. Is because mm -hmm. I know you're really into fitness as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. What, what'd you have for breakfast today? Yeah. Cookies? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> that's not fair. Oh, she's into health. <laughs> but but not not, fair. <laughs> not health because I find that it was no, for love. You can put on for love. nice mm. clothes, but feel like crap, right? Mm hmm. And yeah. It, it, to Absolutely. me, it, it, it will permeate through that. I can see someone well dressed to the nines, and it's like, you know, they feel like crap. Yeah. Right. And it's just, yeah. it's their vibe. Um, well, I, got think a, I got a story for you. So I will never forget the first time I was told to suit up mm. in an ad agency. So we were creative. We were a creative agency. It was one of the biggest agencies in Charlotte. Loved it. I was told to suit up for a meeting, and I just was like, it just felt <laughs> right. vile to Gross. me. And now I I love a suit. I love a well tailored suit now, but I know how to make it me. Right. Mm. I will put like mm. a rock t shirt underneath it, something wow. like Bingo. that. Wow. I mean, and the color has to be right. Wow. 
So I just, I felt like that. Mm. I felt like mm. I knew I had a good suit, but I was like, ugh. And the whole meeting, I just sat there and fidgeted the entire meeting. Yeah. I was like, this is bad. Mm. This is bad. Mm. But it's also like people buy clothes that don't fit them either. See, that's what I was going to say. So like going into, um, so Bell and I have a similar story, like professional career, starting in the corporate world. And just, I, I couldn't stand so many things about it. And like, clothing was one aspect of that. It's like, I felt my whole job in, in corporate America was in this framework. If you have to dress this way, you have to act a certain way. You have to do this, you have to do that. And if you don't act this way, you're out. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't, it was just death. It was like, this is not who I am. This is not who I am to be. Mm -hmm. I don't operate my best in this formula. And mm -hmm. so it's like breaking free from the corporate mentality and starting like entrepreneurship. You know, the beauty of entrepreneurship is that you can do whatever you want. The scary thing of entrepreneurship is that you can do whatever you want, <laughs> you know, to where you are responsible for your bills, but how you show up, you know, is, is up to you and you get to be that. So it's mm -hmm. like, it made me come alive. Like I have this ability, but Belle, you just said like buying clothes that don't fit, put that anywhere. Thanks. Um, I would always go to like, so I love Marshall's TJ Maxx. Love like it. I love browsing through those stores and I find, I go in there to what's going to jump out at I'm me. I'm settling in. Keep going. You know, and get, get comfy. Get that hot magenta pillow behind you. And, <laughs> um, but I would go here and like, I'd get a t-shirt, you know, for like 10, 15 bucks kind of a thing. A nice brand, yeah. but it didn't fit a hundred percent perfect, you yeah. know? And so I'm either buying one that's a little too big or a little too small. It's too long or it's too wide. The sleeves are this or the sleeves are that. Mm -hmm. I was settling, you yeah. know, for something. Yeah. And then like, brands that came on like clothing brands lately like fresh clean tees or fresh clean threads mm -hmm. kind of piggybacking what jason's saying to wear like your health and your fitness being shaped to wear your clothes right and these companies market they did a good job like with their t-shirts to mm -hmm. wear people with the dad bod you know <laughs> i don't understand that but with the dad bod they put on a shirt and they feel like a million bucks yeah you know because it fits them well and it transforms their body if their body's not optimally how they like it they look better in this shirt Mm -hmm. and I think you touched on something so important that there is a very important thing of buying clothes that actually fit yeah. your body. Yep. Right? Yeah. I'll buy clothes that are three sizes too large for me because I like how it fits. I like how it looks. Or yeah. I'll buy clothes that are a size smaller because I like how it looks. I buy guy stuff. <laughs> I pull so stuff. weird. I mean, I'll pull stuff out of my husband's closet and just, I'm like, well, I like the way this looks with this. That's what my wife does. Yeah. Jody. Yeah. Keep doing it, Jody. Keep doing it. <laughs> I mean, it's there and I like the way that it looks. So why not? That's true. Yeah. And, and then it also, like, my husband loves the practical side of just saving money. He's like, don't go rebuy this. I have it. Wear it. Great. I mean, and I, my father-in-law has a whole closet full of suits that he's going to get rid of. And I'm like, I love a good blazer. A blazer is like my go-to in the winter. So I'm like, I'm going to throw these on and see, I have like 10 more blazers now that I get to pick from. I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so you do on Instagram, I don't know if you follow her or see her on Instagram, um, but like you do a lot of each day, like the outfit of the day mm -hmm. of what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. And I think from, from the way I interpret that, like if you have a meeting, you know, versus if you're working from home versus in a coffee shop, like you show kind of the different varieties of what you're choosing based on the environment you're going to. Mm -hmm. But do you find like, are people commenting or when you talk to clients or just friends in general, like to where what you're saying, you put a rock shirt under a suit to where years ago, it's like that our, our parents, they would have looked at them and be like, you're crazy. I'm not, I'm not claiming y'all as my child. You're mm -hmm. putting on a t-shirt under your suit. Like, are people, are you finding that people are like, just so, I never thought that I could put a rock shirt under a blazer. Mm -hmm. A lot of people saying that. Yeah. It's, it is really interesting because people are, even when I address clients, they're like, well, I didn't think that I could wear this. I'm like, well, why not? So, cause we, when we start to brand people, we go through and I'm like, let's call three words down that really, that you feel like embody you or That's that good. you want to aspire to. So anything that we pick out, I'm like, well, does this match those three words? If it doesn't put it back. If it does, well, let's go, let's put it on. Like That's see really how good. it makes you feel. It's totally fine. So yeah. again, I think it's the environment that you're in. You want to be respectful to the environment that you're in and not just go wild and crazy. There are environments for that. I mean, and we're really lucky that we're in a creative industry right. and we can do that. 
you know, and I resonate with you so much that when I was in the corporate world, I was like, this, I just don't love this. And getting dressed every day is such a joy for me. It's, it's a creative, it's an empty creative palette every single day that I get to look at and I get to just, I get to paint this palette every day. And I think it's so fascinating what other people wear because I can tell who they are. I can tell something about their personality and their brand and just how they dress. And I so true. love that. The unspoken, you, you can, you can find out so much about somebody based on looking at some of those things. They don't have to say a word. Mm -hmm. You could look and be like, I bet this about that yeah. person. Well, there's so much psychology behind it. And we were even talking before we started the podcast, the psychology of the color, the right. hot magenta that you guys chose. And you want to tell our listeners the, what color this year is like the color of the year? The color of the year is Viva Magenta. <laughs> Hot Magenta. <laughs> We're on point. Didn't yeah. even know. Y'all are so trendy. I just God. love it so much. Old man leading the pack. <laughs> Didn't even know. Didn't even know. <laughs> Sorry, Belle. Keep going. No, mm -hmm. no. I you mean, know where you're going? Yeah. So I was going to say it's a, it's a psychology behind it. And Jason, you were saying that people tried to get you for years to pick a, a you know, a yeah. pop of color, mm -hmm. anything to add into, add into it. So... Tell your listeners how you picked hot magenta. Mm. That's a good question. Yeah. Is it, is it, well, it was the color of the year of <laughs> no, 2023. No, honestly, it was like a year or two ago. And my daughter came into the office and she was like, Daddy, Daddy, this is my favorite color. And she gave it to me and it, it said hot magenta. I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's pretty dope. I like that, baby. I like that, baby. Here, we'll, we'll get you something. We'll hop, hop magenta on it. And that was it. It was like, it was like a seed, you know, just a seed of inspiration. And mm -hmm. then down the road, fast forward, you know, we were talking about, you know, adding a color and what would it be. And somehow hot magenta got, got thrown in the mix. So and it was that it was a psych it was a psychological thing for you that you associated with your daughter. Because I, you know, I believe you know, in our tagline, "Love your brand." <clears throat> you can love your own brand, right? You can love your personal brand, yourself. You can love your what you stand for, your company, your business, and and that love is gonna, you know, create your mission, your, your drive, your passion, mm -hmm. and everybody will feed off that and it will kind of create its own own brand. And I always say, yep. you know, brand branding is, is pulling, marketing is pushing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So this is longevity. I'm trying to create a, a brand. Brand strategy is five to 10 years, <laughs> right? Marketing is this, this quarter, this sales. Brand mm -hmm. strategy is, is forever, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, in, in creating that, it was like, what, what do we build here? This is, honestly, I don't know where I was going. You were asking me about the color. Mm -hmm. um, we went through it. I, I had second thoughts. I was like, well, it's kind of a, a feminine color, right? You, you got a bunch So of you have the team that's really driving this thing. Like, I'm creating, like, some collateral and just putting a little pop. And Jason... I mean, we've watched a lot change over the past couple of months. Like he's like, oh, okay, <laughs> like, all right, that's a lot of pink, like, you know. Uh, like and we're just down. slowly like, 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 like water bring the it seed. Down. Just water the seed. That's right. great. That's right. great. Just subliminally, know, I've had to tone it down a little bit. How about just a little? You know, I gave him like like balance. Okay. What I saw, you know, mm -hmm. how to, and you know, it's different. And I believe, you know, in being different, just uh, I, I think that can be a way we can stand out. You know, because mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of agencies that have a splash of hot magenta mm -hmm. as their accent color. Mm -hmm. So, and, and plus my baby girl, you know, mm -hmm. she kind of drove that. Talon Alexander is my boy's middle names. So, it's like I'm paying homage to my to my kids. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Know, through, through a color palette. So, will yeah. your next tattoo be hot magenta? Oh. Just write out hot magenta on your arm? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe. You know, we'll take the podcast to the tattoo studio. <laughs> oh, this, I mean, it is mobile. Yes. It's mobile. Yes. We want to make yes. sure you're comfortable, comfortable when you do it. Comfortable. <laughs> really? Are you comfortable? Oh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, there there's an absolute color psychology behind it, and I think 100%. that I think that y'all are on the opposite end of the spectrum from what a lot of other agencies are doing now because. A lot of personal brands and brands that you see now, they, they are more subtle and softer tones and earthier tones. And y'all are, again, you're on the opposite end of the spectrum and you're popping that and people will see that it stands out and it's in an energetic way. It's in a fun way and it represents who y'all really are. So even when y'all would go to meet someone for the first time, Jason, you're more laid back and J Hill, you've got like this personality <laughs> side eye. Mm. You got this personality. It's like, hi, how's it going? And you're more upfront. And it's such a good balance between the black and white and this the magenta or the, you know, the hot pink hot. magenta. It's That's just yeah. I mean, it's y'all. It really is. It's your brand and you love your brand to a T. It's so. you know, Thank you, you know, because that's good to hear because that's when we work with partners, you know, we, we want them to love their brand. That's like what you're saying. You want somebody yeah. when they wear what they're wearing, they want the, them to love that, mm -hmm. you know, because their brand, I mean, it's self-love. If they love that, they love themselves. Yeah. They love how they show up and they're going to show up differently. And mm -hmm. when I created my business, it was about 10 years ago, I intentionally put blue as my color. So it was black and white with gray and then blue, you know, because mm -hmm. psychology of color, blue is like trust and honesty and to where people don't even understand like subconsciously how it works mm -hmm. when you're exposed to these colors and mm -hmm. how we make buying decisions or purchasing behavior based on, you know, how that's communicated to us. All caps versus lowercase, like all those elements, like I'm fascinated by that mm -hmm. come into branding. And so branding is such a fun project to me. And so like with Love Your Brand, do y'all know who Marie Kondo is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you know Marie Kondo? Not know her, but know of her. <laughs> Yeah, you know me, man. I need kind of like when I did Oliver Anthony. I'm like, who are you talking <laughs> like, about? Like what? And they were singing the song. In yeah, here. I know exactly. Who you're so Marie Kondo, about. she was like that organization um, woman to where she would go into people's homes and help them like get rid of all of this stuff that they had, and basically would teach them like if you don't love it, have this attachment to it, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. It's not serving you any good. It's not serving you any purpose. And I taught Nevaeh this like a number of years ago, and where we would go shopping. And it's awesome now, you know, we go to the store and she grabs something. She comes up to me. She's like, daddy, look at this. Oh my gosh, I want it so bad. And then she'll pause before I even have to respond. And she'll say, you know what? I don't love it. So I don't want to get it. And, you know, it's like with love your brand. I mean, I, I love that into where we were in a culture today where we just have so much stuff. Yeah. And gosh. instead, like when we clean out our closets, like, you know, I moved a year and a half ago got rid of everything and started over and my closet is so small now mm -hmm. but when I look in it you know the things I have the articles the clothing that I do have it's like I really love that mm -hmm. I like how I feel when I put that on mm -hmm. I like putting that with this and there's actually like intentional outfits per se even though I'm just t-shirts and athletic you know short pants all day long they're still like I know what goes together as opposed to just having a closet full of stuff to where yeah. what am I going to wear today and just grab something yep. off the rack well, people only wear 20% of their closet it's crazy I'm like what do you do with the other 80% you're just looking at it right now granted I have my things in my closet that I absolutely love they're non-negotiables they come with us on every single move Jonathan knows that at this point that my high school letterman jacket is coming with me on every single move. How often do you wear that? Once a year. <laughs> <laughs> I make sure I take it out. I make sure I take it out and I at least get a picture with it. Because again, I if mean, you don't take a picture with it, it just it didn't, didn't happen. happen. Why didn't no. you wear it today? Um, it's about 800 degrees outside still. Yeah, 800. So um, yeah. <laughs> I was going to implode. Uh, yeah, yeah. Self-combust. So, yeah, that comes with me. Those things are non-negotiables for me when I move. But, yeah, I have a lot of my clients who are like, I would love to see your closet. I bet it's massive. And I'm like, it yeah. is not. It's not. I don't want it. So, and I went through this process in 2010 when my husband and I moved to New York City. We had a studio apartment, but I kid you not, we had two walk-in closets and it was glorious. How did that happen? I have no clue. I have no clue. Um, yeah. But even still in New York City, I had to cull down. I had to cull down everything that we had. I mean, everything that we had had a use for it. It didn't just sit and look pretty. I mean, even the roaches, we used them. So Amazing. Um, they were play pets for our dog at the time. <laughs> awesome. So, um, so it was 
2010, 2011, and I started frugal February. And I was like, I am not going to buy something unless I need it. And I allowed myself to like have lunch like once a week and like go out and eat lunch once a week. And I've been doing that ever since. Um, there are some things that I get, like some of the trendier things. I'm like, I really like this. I know it's just going to be a season for me, but I don't invest in it. It's not an asset for me in my closet. It's just one season. So I try and keep that in mind also. And I teach that with my clients too. I'm like, Hey, let's shop your closet first. Let's do that. See what's in your closet. What do we, where are the gaps? And then we'll go fill in those gaps. But we all have so much stuff and we just uh -huh. don't need it. But right. I love everything that's in my closet too. Mm. So I teach that with personal branding, um, with my clients, like you, you have your own personal brand and I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and they may not think that what they wear, um, or how they appear is affecting their business. And it is because if they are just, if they have their just themselves, or if they have other employees, that is a trickle down effect onto their employees. So how does that, how does y'all's dress affect the, the rest of the staff that you all work with? Is there a dress code for Tal and Alexander? And what is it? No. It's all no about being code. comfortable. Yeah, it's comfortable. Like, <laughs> so, so Jonathan, he's got like the latest technology. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> video, video uh, component. I forgot what it's called. It's a camera, a camera. Um, oh. A webcam. A webcam. You have a webcam? He's got right? a webcam. I am 2023, And it's very unique. It's got a little shutter on it. And so occasionally going somewhere with this. it will work. Occasionally it will not work. It will be a black screen. <laughs> you never know what to expect. If we're, on a, if we're getting on a call with a partner, it's like if it goes black, I'm like sitting there like. Oh. So Jason like knows it. what's happening on the other end. So yesterday, case in point. So my, my computer is 12 years old still rocking it. Jason's always like, should I buy you a new computer? No, this one works. Have my external webcam that sometimes works. <laughs> and so we, he's like, Hey, we have a client meeting today. Like, are you going to show up or is it black screen? And so with this, like yesterday, <laughs> the camera's not cutting on. <laughs> so oh, I, no. I, so I, I call in on my phone <laughs> and I have my computer. So I'm in the meeting, which is Jason with both. And so when, when the camera's not on, there's just a picture of me up. So yeah. Jason's there. It's always awkward when you have a, a Zoom meeting or something with somebody. They're on, but they can't see you. You're just like here. You're watching you. It's all creepy. That's kind of how it was. And then you see my picture, go to black. Picture, go to black. Picture, go to black. And what that is is that I'm turning the knob trying to get my camera to cut on. So Jason knows what hap is happening. And so then, you know, finally it cuts on or I'm connected on my um, actual phone then both audios are on. So there's an echo oh. we're talking. So this is a long way. We're getting sidetracked here, but this is how I show up for meetings. And, um, that has nothing to do with dress code. <laughs> so I was like, is, where are we going, where are we going no, with right, this? So, Land this so plane. Go, going back to the brand. Let me, let me, let me pull it back to the pull brand. Pull back in, pull back in. So gather the think circus. About it. Um, when I created this when with <laughs> TA, I was like, I wanted to really have this relationship with clients slash partners um, and become a part of their, their brand strategy, which was long term. So I had to dig in deep and have these conversations. You got to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. you, they've got to trust yeah. you like family. They've got to expose, you know, their, their passions, their, their drive, their impact. And you, you can't do that if you don't come across as family like mm -hmm. it's funny it's like you know when jay hill started he was like man i feel like a lot of your clients feel like hey we're a part of their family i'm like bam that's mm -hmm. it so back to my brand talon alexander it's family mm -hmm. it's family first right it's if if we work with you you are family if you have a problem you tell me right let's let's talk about it mm -hmm. let's let's not have any any walls up. yeah let's you know, and I believe, I really believe strongly if we can get people to connect with their brand because their brand long term is what everyone else thinks about their brand. They'll, they'll have this, this kind of gut feeling and this, yeah. this image in their headspace of your brand. So yep. it's, that, it's that collective 
mentality of everybody's thoughts of your brand, that's your brand. They drive your brand. Yes. Right? I didn't tell everybody to think about TA in this in this way. Yeah. It just happened because we created a culture. They identified with it. Now they they grow it. Yeah. They, it's yeah. whatever. It's like Bell, what did you think of it? It's I'm like, so excited. I've got two points. Go! You know? It's like <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Y'all, this is my sweet spot. I mm. love this so much. My cup is overflowing right now. Bella, so, I'm sorry, but we have to cut it. No. Uh, podcast is over. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so to that, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. That's right. And it's Boom. what people say about you. Boom. And y'all have done such an amazing Boom. job of humanizing this brand because mm. you've already you brought your family mm. into it and you get to tell that story to your customers and that story just keeps on going. So they're like, You humanized your brand. Okay, I can connect with you. You connect on the color. Is it the children that you can commiserate? You have stories together. You can be joyful together, like a soccer game that y'all had. Is it the hair? Is it, I mean, what is it? So you connected on that aspect because you humanized it. That builds immediate trust right. and they want to work with you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, think about it from our perspective. There's brands that we don't buy because we don't connect with it. Like there's, there's no trust. There are plenty of other people out there who do branding, who do image consulting. There are plenty of other agencies out there, but they come to you because you provide that trust for them that they want. So, I mean, and companies do like multiple bids. So right. like there's that human side of it that they connected with y'all and they want to work with y'all. So I don't think that people understand that or really think of that impact that that, that connection makes on people. It's deep and it's a, it's a long-term strategy. You know, I, I truly believe uh, CBOs are going to be the most important role in any organization. Chief brand officer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Constantly in communication with their customers, constantly getting that feedback loop, right? I think that that is totally tied to every piece of their business and growth from their profits to their to the market share to the visibility and companies do not realize it that's what they try to cut when things get hard they try to cut it is the first thing and I, it's so important i just i cannot uh, well with so many people it. like i think so many uh, businesses they don't understand branding you know they they understand marketing to an extent but they don't understand branding they and how it's, it's all about emotions yeah. and how you're in, connecting with your audience, kind of what Bell's talking about. And like I always, um, if I'm trying to explain to somebody, I give them an example of the Super Bowl. And so like, you know, I have to spend money to make money. And like you're talking about, Jason, we, when we had to cut corners, first thing people typically do is marketing. It's like, it's the last thing you should cut. Um, be efficient with your marketing dollars, but don't cut it. And so I would be like, all right, think of a Super Bowl commercial. These big brands are spending, spending millions of dollars on a 30 second spot or a one minute spot, Coca-Cola. You know, they're putting a video up at the Super Bowl commercial of the, the panda bears, or not panda bears, you know. Polar bears. Polar bears, thank you. Yeah. Polar bears that are drinking a Coke and all that we'll stuff. We'll have a lesson on bears after and this. Thank you, <laughs> Bears 101. But with that, Coca-Cola is not wanting you to drink a Coke right then in that moment. You know, they're wanting you to remember them. And to where when it's time to buy a beverage or you go in the store mm -hmm. and you see Pepsi, Coke or mm -hmm. Sam's or whatever the I don't I don't drink them. But, you know, all those different brands, mm -hmm. you remember them to where mm -hmm. you're front of mind all the time. And that's when we're sending emails, when we're pushing social out, when, Bell, you're really good at social content. You're constantly out there to where people will remember you to where mm -hmm. if you don't, you know, people are going to forget about you. Mm -hmm. And so you have to stay there. And, you know, I think like business is so much like dating to where, mm -hmm. you know, when you get to know somebody, then you have to get to like them. Mm -hmm. You have to like them to be able to continue that relationship and say, all right, this is worth dating. I want to see more yep. from this person. And it's only after you, you like them, you know, that that trust is developed that you're talking about. And so yep. once trust is developed, then you have the opportunity to ask for commitment. You know, when I met Jody and I'm, we're, we're getting to know one another and seeing if she likes me. And then before when she trusts me, I can ask her to marry me, you know, mm -hmm. because that was built. And it's the exact same way what yep. you're talking about with these brands. And so when we approach it from that perspective, like a brand 
you know, you can't be wishy-washy on what we stand for, nope. you know, and those are the ones they're like, Hey, I don't, I want to please everybody. I want to be a people pleaser. I don't want to get any hate, this and that. You're not making an impact. If you stand for something at your brand, you're going to have these people that oppose you and they say, I want nothing to do with your brand based on what you stand for. That's okay. Totally but you're fine. also going to have this group over here. That's like, I 100% back what you're doing and what you stand for. I'm going to align with you mm -hmm. based on that. Yeah. And so, you know, I, when we approach it from that perspective, be strong what you stand for. And that's what you were saying earlier, like you're a woman of faith and all these things that comes out in your content into where you're authentic to who you are. You're probably going to push some people away, mm -hmm. but you're going to attract a huge audience that are like minded that want to do business with you. Hmm. Yeah. And I actually did see a, a pretty the significant loss in followers when I started pushing a little bit more of my faith and mm. just not even pushing it, but just speaking about mm, it yeah. from just a genuine standpoint. And I was like, why am I not talking about this? This is a pillar that I stand on. And, um, but you know, the past few weeks I've just started getting more and more and more followers and I'm like, okay, my people are here. My, my people are coming. Nice. Get That's in right. my boat. People help me, help me roll this life. <laughs> Let's get in here. It's true. I was yeah. listening. Uh, y'all know Gary V. Gary yeah. Vaynerchuk. I was listening to a video from him yesterday and because right now a lot of people blame the algorithm. They're like, well, my social is not reaching people because of the algorithm. There's some truth to that. Um, but he, he brought a perspective. He said, don't blame the algorithm. That's an excuse. Mm -hmm. He was like, it's your content of what you're posting. He was like, if you're posting the stuff that's relevant to your audience that mm -hmm. they want, it's going to be there. So often we post stuff that is not relevant to the audience. You know, we're just posting stuff and it does more. It does more confusion than anything. Yeah. And so therefore, um, because we can all go in that, that criticize ourselves or self loathe like I'm not getting any engagement, you know, this and that. And, um, you know, but, but it's not necessarily algorithm. It's, it's the content. And like the platform I use the most is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I want to grow my business, it's, it's going to LinkedIn and, everything and you you can see all these analytics how many mm -hmm. people impressions you make people are viewing it this and that i saw this guy recently um yeah I, I would post stuff and then i'd go to see who's viewed my profile this guy viewed my profile and then you know didn't comment or like or anything on my post and it looks like my post is getting no visibility you know people aren't commenting and then you know a week later this guy views my profile again a week later, this guy views my profile. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm, I'm consistently pushing out content, even though he's not engaging, you know, he's, he's looking because of what I'm pushing out there. And then I, I get a direct message after that. He's like, Hey, Jonathan, uh, you don't know me, but blah, 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 blah. I need help with marketing. I'm looking at this and that. Would you be open for a call kind of a thing? And if you don't look at that stuff and stay consistent, you can miss out on so much. Mm -hmm. And so like, I mean, I don't know if you want to, comment on this but i mean the consistency aspect of it because it's a lot of work mm -hmm. but what you're doing every time i hop on instagram you know you're one of the first people that pop up because i'm always looking at what you do um i mean is consistency critical today you know with social media and the day and age that we are like yeah. and how you have to show up yeah absolutely i mean it's like it's consistency in anything in life i mean we were talking about fitness you know people want just the fast track or they'll get on their fitness routine for two weeks, maybe a month. And I mean, you see it first of the year, it's like new yeah. year's resolutions. I'm going to get fit. And it has to be just that life change. It has to be consistent. Even with parenting, you've got to be consistent or you're going to confuse your children. It's the same thing on social media. You've got to be consistent, but you have to figure out that thing that works for you. Like what is the schedule that works for you? It's, you know, I try and post once, if not twice a day within my feed, if it's a real or, um, just a, a gener general post. And then I'll do a few stories throughout the day. Um, I know that on Sundays, um, my husband and I are trying to be really, um, just really honed in with Sabbath and resting because it gets exhausting. Yeah. It really does. But this schedule works for me right now and it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, I know people who post like five times a day. And I'm like, but they also have a team that does their content for right. them. I do my own content, but I also, I love it. Yeah. I eat it up so much. You I can love, tell too. I love learning about it. And I love like testing out the new tools and the platform so I can talk about it with my clients. And then I can actually like, I can say, Oh yeah, this worked because or, I don't really like this app because, or I love this app because I mean, we talked about, um, 
oh gosh, what was the thing that came out? <laughs> uh, it was the latest platform that came out. I don't, I don't oh, even uh, use threads. it. Threads. Thank you. I don't use it because it's not, that was too much for me. Right? It was too much for me. So I have very consciously chosen not to do that. And I, I knew I wouldn't be consistent with it. So it's just, everything has to be consistent and constant and not drudgery. There are days where I'm just tired. I'm like, oh, yeah. what am I going to post today? So but that, yeah. I have a bank of content that that's, I can go that's to. That's your brand strategy, Bill. You're, you're giving people a glimpse into who you are, right? And it's a lot of, a lot of companies come to us and they're like, hey, I want a brand. You okay. know, I need a logo. I need travels. I need a website. <laughs> It's like a checklist, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they that, think brand is. That's it's not exactly, your brand. Exactly. That is not your brand, right? Yeah. So let's talk about what what isn't a brand. That's not a brand, right? Mm -hmm. It's a logo type. It's the mood. And let's let's face it, everything is a test. It should be a test. So when you launch things, you're you're launching based off historical data, trends, competitors, and let's let's face it, just like you're what you did in the past, what you think will work, what you're, you know, how talented you are, how, how good you can read the space, but it's still a test. Like, so when you're, when you're a new company or entrepreneur or launching anything, you should expect to test it and then craft that test into your brand, craft that test into your brand strategy, adapt your brand strategy to your feedback loop that you're getting from your customer. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's when you start creating a brand mm -hmm. i just just want to drill that home because mm -hmm. i still feel like a lot of people are misled what a brand is right you, a lot of people have a business not a brand right it's mm -hmm. but but you're constantly yeah. you're building your brand mm -hmm. right uh through, yeah. through inspiration through what you do you're very passionate you can tell with your post that you're very <laughs> passionate right and like I see him and I'm like, wow, she's freaking awesome. Like, I'm, hey, upgrade me. You know, I'm sold. I'm, like, yeah. I'm ready Thank to get you. elevated. And, and, and what I like about what Bell posts is that, you know, there, there, there's been a season where people think you have to have the professionalism, bring in mm. legit cameras and all this stuff. Like there's a time and a place for like a professional video and where that's going to be housed mm -hmm. versus when you grab selfie video and mm -hmm. you're going, you know, y'all made a recent move out more in the country and you're running in front of the cornfields mm -hmm. and just being real and authentic to where people see a day in your life. Mm -hmm. And so you do a good job of a perfect balance of both of those, because I think there's Thank a strategy you. around both of those mm -hmm. to where when to be professional and not that it's not professional, but it's more relatable. Yeah. Because when we produce, let's think of a, a nice expensive video we produce, you know, we're going to use teleprompter. There's going to be no mess ups. When we mess up, you, we re-record re to mm -hmm. where it's perfect. Yeah. When you cut your phone on in your camera, you know, you see the blubbers you see when you mess up you see when he can't speak you know when he t calls somebody the wrong name all this stuff and i think there's something about that that is so good when i'm following people i want to say oh you mess up too it's not just yeah. me because otherwise we look and put these people on a pedestal or a platform yeah. like i'll never be the kind of speaker that they are or i'll never have the kind of influence because they're so polished so when we see people mess up that's when we post like blooper reels it's like look y'all we can't talk. We couldn't record a stinking podcast. We are real You didn't people. even know Jason's name. I didn't know his name. You <laughs> did not say my name. Dude was at my wedding a few months ago, and I called him the wrong name. Jason, Jason Alexander. Name. What if he would have spoken at the wedding and I introduced him? I'd like to As, bring up my really good friend, Jason Alexander. I would have probably just <laughs> went with it, yeah, you to be honest with you. You would have gone with it. Yeah, yeah you should have. Um, I think you hit on a really good point there. It's being authentic and people want to see that. I mean, authentic is just that buzzword right now, but people want to see it. And I personally right. have a really, I have a hard time with that. So the generation that we grew up in, um, you know, it's like you, if you played sports, it's like you go out there and you put your game face on. And I know I've done a lot of work the past few months and I'm like, I know when I put my game face on and I don't, necessarily like it if it's not in a moment where I need to put my game face on. Mm, mm. So, um, mm. it's hard for me to even post on my stories like, Hey, I'm out for a run with the dog and didn't even brush my teeth this morning. So I put a ball cap on as well. And here I am, 
you know, but I've spoken with a lot of, um, I get to work with a lot of real estate agents. They are entrepreneurs in their own right, even if they work with a company. A lot of moms and they're like, we're just barely getting our kids out of the door in the morning and we're barely in the bus line. Like, what can we do to elevate ourselves just a little bit more? And I'm like, pull your hair back in a ponytail, put some lip gloss on and earrings, done. It's that simple. Like, stop yeah. overthinking it. Just stop overthinking it. I mean, and I'm 43 and I still get pimples and now I have gray hair and I'm like, I don't really know. <laughs> what do I do with this? Oh Thank my goodness, gosh. I don't have gray hair yet. What Ooh. do I do? <laughs> Your time's what? coming. Your time's what? coming. <laughs> but it's it's crazy. And I yeah. like I did a story a couple weeks ago about like I'm I have great eyebrows now. I'm like, what is this? What? What happened? And I'm like, okay, I can be real about this because I'm not the only person going through this. And I love the comments that I got on that. They're like, right. me too. Yes. Me too. It just makes you relatable and it people want to connect. You. Yes. Yeah, they want to. So That's I'm good. slowly like telling the story. There's a story behind it. We all have our story. We all have our pain points. And there are people who can connect with that. And we help each other through that. And, you know, we know each other a little bit more. We know the stories. And it's like, how do you make that relatable to people still in a professional manner? You know, to have that connection. And there's a time and place for all those stories and how they come out. And I love that so much. Love it. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I know we're, I think we're up against time. Um, but are we Just making sure that? Yeah, just okay. about. <laughs> this isn't synced up. Look at that. <gasps> Sparkle's my favorite color. So, you know, they, they say with marriage, like, you know, what's mine is yours with your spouse. But it's really with your kids. What's mine is yours. So my iPad is now Nevaeh's with the sparkle, Nevaeh which I know is your favorite so color. It is my favorite color. Um, not not pink. Sparkle, sparkle. is Belle's favorite color. Mm -hmm. See, I know her. Um, but Belle, this has been awesome. How could people find you um, online, social, um, yeah. to, to follow you? Yeah, so Instagram is my jam. I love Instagram. So just at Belle Rape. I have a very unique name. I get to make fun of anybody's name that I want to. So it's at Belle Rape, B-E-L-L-E-R-A-P-E. -L -L -E -E. LinkedIn is the exact same. Um, I'm on TikTok, the exact same. And um, Facebook, it's Bell Darden, B E L L E D A R D E N, because somehow Facebook doesn't want to accept my last name. So there we go. All yeah. right. Oh, and then uh, my website, um, blueprintbybell.com. Right on. Thank you all so much. This has been awesome. This has been so far. I, I, I could probably speak for Jason that will you please come back on again? I because would. I think this is just the start. We could have many, many more conversations. I would. And you have a, a little bit it. of passion when you speak. And so <laughs> that's kind of what, you know, we uh, want to bring on. I love it. Y'all so are She's so like the great. hot, if, if we're black and white, mm. she's the hot magenta right now. I, I could see. Yeah, baby. I mean, definitely yeah. a lot of our partners that, that need a little, that could use some hot magenta. Right. Yeah. I think every partner <laughs> could use some hot magenta in their life so right on thank you so much bail thank y'all so much such a blessing to have you join us today thank y'all for having me y'all are too keep keep putting your light out into this world everybody needs it awesome. Amen. yeah thank you everybody for joining us till next time peace, peace. Thanks for listening and joining us on the Love Your Brand podcast. Stay tuned for the next episode and remember, share the love. <laughs>